Hi, nice to meet you, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to the studio visit. Uh, I'm a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary artist uh, working in visual art, textiles, uh, performance art, uh, and drawing. And um, I will share with you a little bit about my practice and uh, the way I'm thinking and working and where I'm starting from. So I will go first to my website and I will show you the work that I actually uh, was doing in Israel um, like eight or seven years ago. And uh, this is the place where I feel my performance art practice started because I was very much consumed by the topic of the body and how the body responds to the environment where I was in and sometimes how the body cannot process uh, certain uh, things that are happening uh, around us and how art actually helps uh, us to process it just through expressing it with uh, your hand. So I will go right to the drawings and I will show you the watercolor drawings that I was doing and back in 2010, 2009. Um, let me go and make it bigger. Are you see it big enough or it's small? Yeah, okay. Medium. So, so those are a series that I was doing in Israel using mostly watercolor painting, uh, drawing, sorry, and uh, ink. And um, yeah, it, it was mostly my body that I was doing and drawing, but I also was working a lot with life model drawing at the, at the moment and I was very much inspired uh, with my teacher Harold Rubin who just recently passed away. He is a big inspiration for me and uh, I'm very much consumed here by more like an atmosphere and textures that I'm paying attention to and how the body experiences um, a current moment, what's going on with me in the current moment. So here I'm using acrylic as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's more uh, expressing the mood, the, the situation that I'm in and uh, without words, without, it's more like I, I consider it as being mute still in this state of uh, making the body on paper. Can you say what, how your teacher influenced you so much? Like, what was it that you picked up from him? Absolutely. Uh, my teacher, uh, he was a very special um, in terms of how he was um, approaching drawing classes and how he was teaching us. He was basically performing for us and showing how to enter the state of the body that uh, conveys more than just what we are seeing, but go going more like deeper into experiences of uh, this person that we are uh, drawing and ourselves and making line more sensual and sensitive. And uh, he was moving in a very particular way. So, and, and, and constantly pushing us to feel more uh, out of like what we are seeing actually. So, that's why it was very more like it, it, it's uh, it's maybe cheesy to say but on a soul level it it, it more the experiences of uh, coming up not only from the head but also from the body itself uh, so this is the start that's how i started i was doing this watercolor uh, drawings for a long time maybe for five years uh, just that just watercolor and that's how I came to New York too. I was uh, applying to a School of Visual Arts residency and uh, I applied with the series of drawings of uh, watercolor and um, to the SVA School of Visual Arts residency and that's how I started here in New York in 2010. Yeah, so I will stop share right now and I will show uh, you more, more recent work that I'm doing right now. Uh, just a second, just open it, okay. So this work uh, includes um, my recent, um, uh, just a second. Yeah. 
It includes my recent performances. It's basically the iterations of performances that I will show you uh, that I'm currently doing. I started doing it last year and I performed it in several venues, including Smack Melon, it, including um, Satellite Art Show, uh, uh, and including Assembly Room that I was performing it at. I'm working this uh, clay in this performance. And uh, here are some photographs. I'm um, working this um, massive amounts of clay. And I also cover my face in this performance. And uh, just a second, I will show it a little later. I just will make a little introduction about this work. So uh, I work with clay and clay for me, it's a, almost like the body experience itself. It has a lot of weight and uh, it also has like this earthy experience and texture and it almost can take the burden on itself it kind of like accepts it so i um i work and i cre i created the character that uh, you will see now that i cover my face with clay mask and i put on myself clay cover myself with clay and i sort of create like an armor or a shield uh, and then uh, I slowly tried to uncover it or like, remove it from myself, like uh, shed the skin, the old skin that is already obsolete, that I cannot hold anymore. And uh, I uncover my eyes and mouth and I speak up through these holes that I create in this mask. So this performance that you will see right now, uh, I performed two days ago near Brooklyn Museum, where I recently went to protest uh, Black Lives Matter and support uh, uh, people of color. And uh, here I'm actually speaking to uh, Russian people. And I, I had recently several conversations with some of my friends and uh, some of my relatives. And uh, it's a very uh, confrontational uh, and very problematic topic, especially with people in my community. So, and for me, it was, I was thinking also in, within the community of people who was born here in US. And very often I feel there are some topics that are conflicting. And uh, for me, this is exactly the theme that I'm working with, how uh, I myself as an immigrant try to find this place of belonging and try to kind of, uh, find this place where the history is contradict and sort of like cannot stick to each other. So here it is. <laughs> <It's their sound. laughs> It's not the whole performance. The whole performance lasts for 30 minutes. Here is just a part of it, just to make a sense of what it's, what's happening in actual performance. I like the exercise part. <laughs> it's like almost giving a burst to something or like shedding a skin. That's how I experience it. This my this is my body.
Please give support. Anti mask. I mean, perfect. Opposite from mask. Are people walking by while you're doing this? Yes. And they... some, some of them stopping by. You can see Russian people being in front of protests. And this was recently, just two days ago, during this movement yes. and everything, and COVID, and yeah, and it was two days ago as a part of uh, OPA uh, performance festival. Must be hot. See the critical when other people speak up. Yeah, I cut it so you can <laughs> the end now. <laughs> yeah. I also hope to believe and hope. But you know, the people in power, they plan every step between opposition and masses. And I did believe before opposition lost. I did believe. And you know, power, it's like, oh, it's like the huge machine. And every step, it's planned between buses and opposition. Every step is planned between buses and opposition. you to be free. I want to be free. I'm free. I'm free. I am free.
So that's uh, that's how this performance usually looks like. It's not uh, the same topic every every time, but uh, the topics they're very heavy. It's emotional labor for me, and uh, I, I have to prepare uh, and and work on that myself. And I usually uh, read about a history, and I, I talk to my friends, and I talk to many people who are involved with in in both sides in, in, in American and Russian friends and, um, uh, and and I think about it for me it's um, it's something that is important as a process because uh, I was kind of denying for many years this experience of immigration and the experience of who I am and for me it's basically reclaiming myself reclaiming my identity back so it's uh, sometimes heavy to see. <laughs> so here's the uh, next work. The next work is the film that I was doing in, in, in Israel recently in December. And in this uh, film, uh, I'm doing it with my family. So it's me, my sister, my mom and my dad. We perform the, in this film together. It's, uh, it's a performance we are not repeating the scenes we are doing it in the first uh, shot and it, it's just one shot. And um, in the film, we, we also um, reflect on our experience of immigration and we are trying to find the bond to the place where we live in Israel. Um, I also feel the bond to Israel as I lived there for 16 years. So for me, I feel I need to process three different places and three different histories one in Russia, one in Israel, and one here in US. And every place has its own, uh, has its own history and has its own uh, particular uh, moments, which is, not, um, which is not that easy to process and, and to connect. So I'm trying to find these points of belonging uh, to myself and hopefully to others as well. So here, me and my father in the first scene uh, are going and planting the teeth in a desert. And teeth are a, a kind of metaphor for me. It's like a body part. And it's also something that it's very basic related to survival as we are uh, chewing and uh, it's something in our mouth that um, helps us to process food. Where is this? It's in Israel. It's a near in the desert Arava, in the place uh, where we first arrived and where we lived. It's called Elat. And uh, I lived in Elat for four years. My parents lived there for uh, almost 12 years. So we are going to, uh, we are going to the desert in right near the uh, town itself. And that's where we perform this ritual. It's also, it's also like a piece. It's not the whole film. The whole film is like 30 minutes. What is that made out of plaster? No, it's made out of uh, a, a particular kind of clay that it's not breakable. Oh. Unfired or fired? No, it, it's a polymer clay. Polymer clay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. В девяностом году я работал в Казахстане. Just a second. So here, uh, my dad is giving an interview. Uh, it, the whole interview lasts in about twelve minutes in uh, the film itself. And uh, he's speaking basically about the experience that uh, happened to him in Russia, including uh, his arrest. He was arrested in Russia and that was a part why we moved uh, to Israel in 97. And he speaks about the experience, how money lost value and how it was for him at the moment. Uh, so we basically reflect on a little bit before we, step, we take a step back to understand what happened to us, uh, and that's where... So, мы занимались бурением э, в Акюбинской области, занимались бурением э, скважин и скважины. 
э, это была разведка э, нефти или газового конденсата. Mm -hmm. А потом... Это какой год был? Это 90-91. Mm -hmm. Там был очень интересный момент, когда э, был обмен денег. Я уже не помню точные даты, когда был. Но начали, э, началась девальвация рубля и э, начали отменять сотки и пятидесятки. Я видел, как это все происходило. На меня это произвело очень большое впечатление. Ну, как бы это сказать. Почему? Потому что люди просто выбрасывали эти деньги. Это как бумага. Просто бумага. А вот, как, вот как это происходило? Может, вот. как бы такая... Ну, я видел один только такой момент, когда э -э мы находились в Актюбинске. Мы находились в Актюбинске. Я сейчас не помню точно, или в Актюбинске, или, или в Волгограде. У нас перелетов самолета был э, через Волгоград. И я видел, как человек вышел и выбросил пачку денег э, с почты. Ну, очень, очень тяжело было смотреть. Некоторые, я знаю примеры, когда... В том числе это буровики, с которыми я был знаком. Они работали на острове Врангеля. Да, остров Врангеля. Они, один из них, он все время ездил и периодически покупал, там, кто купил машину, кто купил дочке квартиру, кто купил себе дом. А другие просто копили, не знаю для каких целей. И на конечный, в конечном итоге получилось... Следующее. Этот человек перед началом девальвации имел два дом, квартиру и две машины. А другой человек, который, у которого, наверное, было не меньше денег, наверное, и больше, просто все деньги сгорели. Вот как прожить всю жизнь, я себе думаю, как прожить всю жизнь, копив, коп, накапливая, накапливая, в чем-то себя урезая, куда-то там не поехал, что-то там не сделал, что хотелось бы, что-то не купил. И потом все это превратилось в прах. Это просто трагедия. На тот момент, я думаю, там было очень много очень больших трагедий. And here is the last part of, the, of this film. Uh, that it's a uh, cold ritual of coming together where we come as the whole family to the desert and uh, my mom reads the letter that my dad wrote. Uh, he left a year before us because uh, he's supposed to be arrested in Russia so he had to leave very quickly and uh, she's reading the letter that my dad wrote me and we sort of like remember and revive this experience that happened to us because uh, you know as something that is traumatic experience we often try to forget and it takes an effort to remember so we come together and uh, try to remember it They perform rituals here. Uh, everybody, everyone is doing different ritual, uh, consumed in their everyday routine uh, and uh, reflecting on their own in, in different ways. And then we are coming together and gathering around my mom when she's reading the letter. It's, uh, it's more to show like Everyone is in their bubble, in, in, in their routine, doing things, and then there is a moment when we gather as a family to understand and to share this too. Через некоторое время вся энергетика, вложенная в книгу, придет к тебе. Не через ум, а через сердце. Не бойся, читай. Очень скучаю без вас всех. Люблю и надеюсь, что вы скоро ко мне приедете. Папа. This is the end of the letter, of course. This is not the whole letter. Uh, but uh, the idea is that um, 
the whole the whole letter was about uh, how my father is hoping for us to come and hopes for a better life for us to be. Uh, this expectation that uh, was created when this letter, uh, when I received the letter. Oops, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so this is the film and that's what I was planning to show in the Bronx River Art Center uh, as video. I, um, I consider to show it on three different screens uh, that show these uh, parts uh, separately and uh, that viewer can kind of uh, connect the stories and connect the ends on their own and, and understand how, how it comes together. Though the screens are uh, close to each other, so it's uh, clear that it's one story. And uh, here is the work that I also want to share with you. It's about my grandma. And uh, here is the photograph uh, probably from 60s uh, when my grandma participated in the parade. Uh, as a child, I really loved parade and my mom uh, didn't like parades because she felt it's something that is forced on her, enforced. And um, uh, the whole idea is uh, that in, I make this work in response uh, after my grandma passed away. And um, I'm uh, performing a ritual when basically I'm saying goodbye to her. Uh, and here it is. This is the performance here. Uh, this, perf uh, sorry, this work was presented also in several places. This is a uh, NARS foundation that uh, I was showing this work um, during open studios and also in exhibition that I participated. And after that, you will see the, uh, the, the performance for the camera itself. So this is basically performance for the camera. I also work in this performance with the idea of teeth. Those are real teeth, human teeth, that I found. And uh, I'm, uh, it's a part of the body that I'm saying goodbye to my grandma in a, in a more um, symbolic way. And uh, I'm basically uh, putting the seeds into the soil and saying goodbye. The flossing is also something that I uh, often use in my performances. It's, uh, it's more like a cleansing ritual, something that um, very much related to the idea of mouth and uh, words, what's coming out of us and sort of like cleaning it out. I'm also wearing the wig sort of, uh, that reminds my grandma and uh, I'm a little bit transforming in her. I'm, I'm becoming her in this performance too. So it's a part of uh, your relative that is in us. Uh, all our relatives, they stay, even though they pass away, they leave something in us. And uh, this is a part of it too. How we say goodbye, I feel like it's important. It's also the performance that uh, includes iterations. So this is the first iteration. I'm still performing this. Um, uh, this work uh, to understand it better, to to let it unravel, and um, and in hope that it will be more celebratory than mourning, in in some moment. Here uh, I'm eating a Ukrainian dish uh, called putya, and this is the dish that was shared during funeral rituals in Russia when I was growing up. And uh, I'm also ritualistically eating the food with, and sharing it with my grandma here.
So why are you wearing that wig? It's something that it's uh, like my, the hair of my grandma looks like. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's to connect with her, to remind visually of her appearance, to come closer to her as a part that exists in me. Yeah. Also, uh, Hasidic women wear wigs that look very much like that. Yeah, my, my grandma, by the way, she is not Jewish. Uh, my grandma, she is Russian. It's uh, on my mom's side. My uh, dad's side is Jewish. And uh, so it's not Hasidic. It's just to uh, take her appearance. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically it. Uh, please, if you have any questions, I'm uh, more than excited to answer. Well, unfortunately, um, we don't have Lionel yet. Ah, well, so hopefully we can get a nice dialogue going here. Is he in uh, Puerto Rico? No, he's here. He just at the last minute wrote to me that he was running late. Um, I just rescheduled Hector for Wednesday. So if Lionel doesn't make it today, maybe he and Hector can go on Wednesday together. So, sorry about that. Uh, it's been a strange day. Okay, Kathy, so can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I was curious about um, two things. One, your, uh, the preparation you have to do um, mentally and physically like the the preparation bef like before before each performance and then the recovery emotional and physical like if you have specific um i don't know tactics or things that you do maybe it depends on each one like for your own self because i imagine it they're so intense um <laughs> you know I, i'm just curious if you have if you have to do that or not i do oh yeah i i do so from this performance that I did two days ago, I'm still recovering. It takes time. The more intense performances, the more time it takes to recover. But uh, I feel also thankful to myself that I was able to do it and to my body. So uh, that it was able to handle this uh, situation in general. Uh, I do prepare uh, before each performance. Um, I usually write a script for myself. Uh, the sentences and uh, the conversation that I'm leading usually includes a lot of text in all my performances and uh, I'm um, preparing uh, mentally. I usually don't go out and meet with people at that time and I'm just trying to stay with myself and uh, repeat it many times and to feel, to enter basically the field, the space uh, that I want to enter and to be as much honest as I can with that uh, because uh, sometimes the the situation that I'm trying to recreate they uh, they're painful so um, naturally body rejects it I, I don't want to go there right. so it, it takes an effort for me to to repeat it over and over and over again and then at some point I finally enter this space where I'm able to be honest with myself and uh, be able to take it out. <laughs> yeah, because there's a certain endurance to that, right? Like yeah. on every level. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then what about recovery? Do you have specific things you do for? Yeah, I, I don't have specific things. I'm just trying not to do much and not to uh, just to calm myself down slowly. Because uh, not to be too intense, not to go out, just to go back to normal, basically. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. Unbelievable work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Kathy, um, I have a question. How do your parents feel about the work that you've done? Um, you know, are they also artists? Are they, how, did they, how did you get them involved and what was their reaction? Yeah. Uh, my mom was immature actress and my parents, they were both involved in theater and my uncle was involved in theater as well. He is basically performance artist in Moscow right now. So 
I do have a background of performance and I was also uh, in theater since I was eight years old and I was performing up until I was 14. So I think it stayed in my body. My parents um, were, <laughs> it, it was hard for them. The experience itself was very intense. And as artists, we are familiar with this intensity. We know what it means to, what, what it means, what kind of effort you need to do when you're making this big project, uh, to, like you want to make film or you may want to make an exhibition. It's something, this kind of ambitious project, it basically takes everything from you and you know that you will be exhausted. And uh, my mom was questioning it, uh, but she was willing to go there with me. I knew that she had this intention because she, she, underst she understood that I'm doing it for the purposes of healing. It's, uh, it's something that is important for me and I was hoping that it will create like a new movement in my family so we can speak about these issues. Because um, especially my father, he doesn't like speaking about his past experiences. It's very painful for him. He tries to completely avoid these topics. So that's one of the reasons one, why I'm doing the interview with him. I just wanted him to speak and open this up. He never spoke about these issues after we came. So it's, uh, I felt that it was a lot of release, feeling of release that uh, we were able to open it up. And, um, and I'm still, I'm still uh, messing up with this team. It's, it's hard, it's heavy. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm happy that I was uh, able to tap into this team because um, I think it's very important for me. I feel, uh, I ask myself a very weird question that uh, in case if I'm dying, uh, what I will be thankful for. So <laughs> I will be thankful for making this film because I feel it was very important for me. Something that I was able to do. Yeah. That's so Russian, I can't believe that. You know, you strike me as a very, always have struck me as a, you know, you're always so jolly and happy and which is, you know, we're not all like that. I could tell you know that I'm not like that. But Russians deep down, you know, it's Dostoevsky. Deep down, it's all, um, you know, doomsday. You know, so for you to say that, to, for that to come out of you now, it, you know, with your smile and everything, it's like, oh, right, exactly. She's still <laughs> Russian. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a part in me. I, I actually, I feel it's, it's a composition of uh, it's a several components. I'm also Israeli in, in, a, in my way of thinking too, because I was growing up there. I came there when I was 16 years old That's and I adopted certain mentality there as well. Yeah. So it's a combination. <laughs> point of view, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely. You're right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So did you ever work with clay? How did before in other in more traditional ways? How do you take clay on wet, heavy? Uh, obviously, you wanted that heaviness in this particular piece, at least. But you've used clay other times, too. What is your attraction to wet, heavy clay? Yeah, I uh, before I started doing these performances, I was envisioning uh, soil for many times I, I had kind I had visions of working with soil and ideally I would like to go to the place to the site itself and work with soil as a real material that's uh, my dream uh, but um, because I don't have this option yet to, to make film for example you know there is a place called Kerch in um, in Crimea and they had like uh, they ha uh, there is like a volcanoes a warm volcanoes with mud and uh, I would ideally like to work with this kind of material because it's something that is a part uh, of the land itself and I feel I'm more and more interested in the land as the layers of uh, history you know I think that like history is sort of like piling up and becomes soil and that's how I imagine it. 
that's why I'm interested in to work with uh, clay. And also, oh, I, I want to work with particular kind, but because I don't have it, so I work with clay that I find around. <laughs> what yeah. kind of, what particular kind do you? The, the one in Kerch, I would like to work with this black soil that um, I was seeing people uh, applying on themselves when I was growing up. So we have these very salty lakes in my area where I lived. And I was seeing constantly people were applying the mud from the lake on themselves. Right. So I think it connects to this experience. They do that in Israel, at the Black Sea. Sorry? They do that in Israel also at the Black Sea. You go there. To... In, in, in the uh, Dead Sea, right. Yeah, yeah. The Dead Sea. Right, and you put the clay all over yourself. I did that when I was in Israel. Oh, really? Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, that's what I'm imagining in my uh, mind when I'm thinking about clay. That's where it comes from. <laughs> from this experience. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank All you, right, Tati. For joining me. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank okay. you. That was so great. Thank you. Hasta mañana. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>